I haven't posted any YouTube videos for a while because I've become a bit distracted by attempting to build uh, an 084 tank engine for my garden railway without the aid of any drawings, plans or indeed design or clear idea where I'm going on it. If the project comes to anything, I will, later on in the year, post a video on my trials and tribulations and hopefully success. As is normal with this sort of project, I've got a, a few parts that will necessitate the use of a four-jaw chuck. In that context, I wondered if viewers might be interested in a little device made virtually for free that enables a centre mark on a part in the four-jaw chuck to be set up accurately and very quickly. I've got a couple of cylinders to machine up for the new Gage 1 locomotive that I'm making or trying to make. Um, and that's going to necessitate the use of a four-jaw chuck. I don't think I've shown this before. This uh, bit of a device, very homemade, costs nothing, is, uh, is what's referred to as a centre finder or a wobbler. And the principle is there's a little bit of uh, stainless steel rod. There's about one inch sticks out this side and in my case about eight inches sticking out the other side so a small amount of movement at this end if it's something eccentric translates to quite a lot of movement at that end the center part of the wobbler is The height of it is such that it is aligned, this point is the centre, centre height of the lathe. And if we bring the tail stop up with the rotating centre just for a point of indication, hopefully you can see this centre pop is not in the middle by a country mile. And you can see that the pointer is wiggling about a fair bit. And the plan is to adjust matters so that this pointer doesn't really move when the pop is aligned with the centre of the lathe. So here are my two keys. I've got some little bits of brass in the jaws to stop damaging the, uh, the work. And the idea is to just slowly adjust the thing round. To try and get matters in line. And already you can see there's been quite a, quite a large improvement really. With very little effort. I do find using two keys to be quite handy. And there we are, we haven't gone very far. I'm just going to engage the carriage and bring it forward to keep the pressure on the pointer. Already, you can see that's perhaps very close. Which means this dot, because there's an 8 to 1 magnification, that dot is already running pretty true. But obviously we can get it a lot better than that. Now that pointer is really barely moving at all and as this isn't a totally precise part I think I'm going to call it at that. To use or adjust my forge or chuck I found it over the years to be useful to actually have two keys which I use together 
and again I'll show this on the lathe in a minute. Um, long since lost the original key for my four jaw. Um, so these are homemade, just filed up roughly. Um, and the difference is there's a, a, a longer, one with a longer stem which works on the front jaw. And then there's one with a, a shorter stem, stem to work on the back of the chuck. And the reason for the shorter stem is you can't use this one because it would uh, your fingers will be hitting the motor and whatnot at the back of the lathe. So I find it handy to have two of them to use together. It just makes the adjustment a bit, a bit quicker. An example of the wobbler in use in the forejaw. The leverage of the pointer is such that a relatively small error in the dot in the part to be centred results in a large uh, difference at this end, as you can see as I rotate the chuck. So the plan is simply to move the part across, ultimately, just tighten the jaws a bit, until matters line up at this end. So. See there's a difference here, so the part needs to go over there to make the pointer in line with the, the rotating centre that I'm using to uh, indicate. And you can see already, hopefully, the error here is quite small, which means the error here is actually becoming quite negligible. But and that's taken just a few minutes longer because I'm doing a bit of talking. But um, if uh, you're prepared to play about, you can get it extremely accurate. Uh, one of the things is to get the difference as the wobble equal each side of the uh, each side of the point there, so that when you correct matters. Using the chuck. I mean that point is not moving now really, no barely. So the dot in the part that I'm going to turn is um, spot on really. Simple device, costs nothing to make. Bit of tin, bit of brass would do. I think that's a ring from an Amol carburetor, if people remember such things. And that's just a bit of bracket with a bolt through the bottom. No issues. And that dot is now running absolutely true. So no need for DTIs or anything complicated and you really can't get it wrong as far as I'm concerned. I hope this has been helpful. My wobbler was made specifically for my Myford ML7 and it's been in use for probably um, 30 odd years. But the principle would apply to any small lathe I think. The idea behind this is not mine uh, and the first reference I've got to it which is where I did the original was The Amateur's Lathe by Lawrence H. Sperry. My version was published in 1954 so it's uh, been about a while. I also think there's been similar devices serialised in Model Engineer years ago. If you would like to see other attachments that I've made mostly for free to help with my workshop and speed things up, 
please let me know and I'll see what I can do. Thank you.